friends. Two wasps. Like, she's just there like now. staring at wasps. Well, there's two, and you just you just sprayed that nest like I know. two days ago. Now there's two two little drones that must have lived through the wasp apocalypse. Oh, uh, they probably were out stinging people, causing chaos and hurting others. And now they're back. And here's here's something you need to know. I don't kill anything. Anything. As a matter of fact, we had a grass spider about that big in our bedroom the other day, and I caught it, took it outside. The list is let it short, go. but there is a list. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are number one. And wasps. That's it. Yes. Most was Some wasps are pollinators, but not all of them. And that is, there are not enough wasp pollinators to make it for those that just kill other insects for the fun of it, which they do. So, yeah. And they, I've been stung enough that, <laughs> that, that I, just I take you. a lot of joy in killing those things and watching them <laughs> drop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. He's not sorry at all. I'm not sorry at all. <laughs> What, it looks like you've been in a, a battle. Uh, yeah. yeah, so right before we shoot this, our our Jack, our sweet, sweet. beloved dog Jack, Jack, who is a holy terror, <laughs> uh, just uh, just had a nutectomy. Yes. <laughs> which is what I like to call it. Uh, and so he's got a cone on his head, and he is. Have you ever had a dog, a crazy dog? A crazy with a cone dog. Because most dogs it's get It's like a, cone. a weapon. Yeah, most dogs get a cone, and it kind of like chills them out a little bit because yes. they're a little like oh this is weird oh no i can't no. go there I, I used to go there and now i can't no not jack he, he'll, i'm not like jack. i'm gonna get there eventually <laughs> and that dog ran he, he already cut me in the leg this morning yeah. pretty bad mm -hmm. uh and so then right before we go on little head butt with the cone yeah he uses it like a weapon like you did when you had we were a kid and had a cast and yeah beat Whack. people with it well you know and we had wondered when we first got jack who could dump his precious, oh, precious so baby sweet. love? Who would dump him? The dog is a He's menace. Saying. He is a menace. Now, we love and adore him. Yes, we've said many times his name should be Dennis. But he is a very bad animal. And one of the reasons we were so happy to find this loving young dog was that we've got another young dog Just that Danny. has got so much energy. We thought, oh, you know what? They'll play and they'll wear each other out. They'll be buddies. And they were no. for five minutes. And instead, they want to kill each other, and they want to kill us, and yeah. they love us too much, really, yeah. is the problem. But And so they argue over which <sighs> one of them gets to sit on our lap, and one yeah. of them weighs 85 pounds, and one of them weighs, what, 45 pounds? Yeah. And we're old people. <laughs> so, we're too old for this. We're too old for we're this. Like, we had late in life babies, and we are too old yeah, to handle that's this. that's exactly what it is. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. You're going to drink some Diet Coke right yes, on camera. Yes, I sure am, because... Or someday, someday, someday. Yeah, Coke, hey, Coke. Coke Zero is going to come through <laughs> and see the value of our restoration day. Hashtag Coke, Coke, Coke Zero. Zero. Come on. <laughs> you know she needs a brown. <laughs> Uh, Lane, let's talk to, let's tell the people something, uh, house related since that's why they're here. Okay. Okay. Uh, sounds we, good. We've had a lot going on the last, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. We've had a lot going on, and, um, and very little at the same time. That's part of the, my frustration. Yes. So, uh, hopefully you are aware that we now have Hope Farm and that is, uh, our next huge restoration project. And we have made some leeway there. Headway? Leeway is not a headway. word. Headway. You give leeway. We've made headway. There you go. <laughs> I'm giving you leeway with your vocabulary. Okay. Um, but we have made headway some. Now, this is one thing I think we should continuously reiterate. Okay. As we go through hope. Look how baggy this shirt is right here. It, it makes me look real fat. Um, <laughs> is that this is going to be very lengthy and slow because there's a lot of it that we are not in control Early on with this, with this new roof system. Well, and we also, the roof system is one thing that is, it's just gonna take a lot of time to move forward with it. And then after that, we have, we wanna be like really meticulously, because it's such a historic structure, we don't wanna just be like busting in there and ripping out walls and things. Right. Like, oh, we gotta be careful with this one for sure. Yeah. And take, and and we don't have as much leeway. There, yes, perfect. <laughs> you know, I have a pro. Like, I want things happening, big things, 
pretty things happening yeah, from the, the beginning. Yeah, pretty things because they're so much ugly. They're so much ugly and I want to see something pretty, something beautiful. Right. So, there were, I thought, some 1920s balance cornices that had survived the fire in, in the, the dining, dining room. room. Yes. And I thought that they were tin or zinc, which would be indicative. Tin, especially of the 1920s, zinc a little bit earlier. We took some down. Yay. You wanna show me? I thought these were gesso, but I think they're actually like a pressed tin, don't yeah, you? Tin, for sure. That beautiful. It bodes well, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. Hooray. Hooray. Got them down. Once they're down, took the curtains off because there is a itty bitty possibility. I, I'm hopeful. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm more I'll hopeful go with than that. you that we can save those curtains. Well, they're scorched. And when I thought it was just soot, I was more hopeful once I saw that they were very scorched. I don't know how they'll die. That's my only concern. But the worst case scenario, I can use them as patterns to make new ones. They're striped. I like it. <laughs> We're gonna have zebra curtains, zebra draperies. We may have dark green draperies. Got the curtains down to discover that the cornices are in fact stamped brass, which makes them 1840s period balances cornices um but then we so then we brought them home so i could clean them would you like to know what i'm doing yes please <laughs> so these are this is one of the four cornices that were in the dining room of hope farm the four cornices of the apocalypse the four cornices of the apocalypse <laughs> okay i'm yes. sorry Edit no, that that's out. perfect no don't that's perfect because uh, that's how I'm feeling right now. These were beautiful, we think 19th century gilt cornices, and they survived the fire. But you can tell that they're black. These were, you can see little hints of it all around, actually gold leaf gilt. The black on them, one would assume, is from being burned. But there was no active fire in the dining room. This is all soot. And so we're going to start today the process of trying to remove the soot from these cornices. So why am I in the bathtub, um, but I'm not running any water? It's because there are two types of soot. There's dry soot and oily soot. Dry soot comes from natural fibers burning. Oily soot comes from non-natural fibers burning. And even some woods can cause oily soot. But what that means is you can't remove soot with water. If you start to put water on soot, it just becomes sticky or and adheres even more soundly to the surface. So you wanna use, you can use vinegar, you can use mineral spirits. I'm using Dawn dishwashing liquid. It's my favorite to, you know, Dawn cuts grease, as we know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cover this. I've got one half of it covered in Dawn dishwashing liquid. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute and then I'm scrubbing it with my um, oversized toothbrush. This is actually supposed to clean toilets. I don't know who cleans toilets with that. Like, I'm not getting that close. To see how much of this is soot and how much of it is char. And then I'll re-gold leaf it if I need to. I'm happy to re-gold it. That'll be something fun for us to watch and to do. One of the reasons I'm doing it this way is because we want to encapsulate the soot particles. Soot particles are toxic. Um, we don't want them where they can get airborne and we can inhale them. So if we if we go ahead and saturate them in the Dawn dishwashing liquid, that's going to trap the soot particles. So as I clean them off, they're not inhalable anymore. So, wish me luck. I have four of these to do. This is this is as clean as we're going to get. This is after two treatments with Dawn, and then with this stuff, which I used. Uh, fully concentrated, it's wonderful for paint removal. So if it's not coming off of this fully concentrated and it's not coming off with Dawn, it's scorched. There are, there's no telling what the temperature in this fire was. It was an unbelievable conflagration. And you know when you're ironing your shirt, you scorch your shirt? 
your shirt isn't on fire. It's just exposed to really high temperatures and it, and that causes a burn. Well, that's what this is. All of this blackening, especially on these raised areas, you can tell the raised areas, they're a little closer to that heat. So they're actually scorched. They're not dirty. See, there's no, no more soot on this at all. This is not soot. It's just scorched. So what that means is once I get these clean, I will get to gild them for you and you'll get to see what um, gold leaf gilding looks like on a piece like this. Kevin wanted to leave them like this, but I think, and I do love the way this looks. I love the definition it gives, but I think once we get the house all done and all of the other finishes look relatively new, if I put these up in this condition, I, they would bother me. Um, and there's also a little part of me that doesn't really want to leave any lasting reminders of the fire in the living spaces. So, and then there's a part of me that just wants to gild these. So we're going to tackle that. So what you doing, Lane? Oh, it's cleaning the cornices. And I thought I got them clean. I thought I got myself clean before I went to bed. And I didn't. And I got soot on the bed. So now I'm having to change the sheets. Now, I always said if I was a super rich woman, I would have brand new sheets every single night. Kitty, Kitty, I would never, ever have the same pair of sheets twice. But I have found a mail order. <laughs> which means you may be in trouble with linen sheets and I'm gonna put them on. I'm gonna have new, brand new sheets. Look at the pretty packaging. I love things that come with pretty packaging. It always makes it a better value for me. But I ordered the Brooklinen Luxe Hardcore Bundle. So really, I saved money. You don't have to fuss at me about buying things because I got 25% off by ordering the bundle, which comes with the sheets the pillowcases, and a duvet cover. So we're gonna spend our first night tonight on these. Beautiful. Oh, they feel like heaven. I know they're white, but they have a ton of colors on the website. So if you decide that you need a different color, we will order one of their many colors that they offer. Okay. Don't you love the way they feel? So yes. these are actually sateen. They're not for kale. So instead of that kind of scratchy feel that you get with propel sheets, these feel like butter. These seem like really nice sheets. They are. Are we, can we afford really nice sheets? Did you spend a lot of money on these? We can always afford really nice sheets. <laughs> well. But Brooklyn is having a huge Labor Day sale. So now for September the 6th, you get 20% off all of the amazing things on their website, which is sheets and duvet covers and towels. There's tons of things that are on their website and they're on sale. And you know how I feel about it. If it's on sale, I'm actually saving money. And not only did we have the cornices, we had the tie backs, the original. Now there's four windows and only three of them had tie backs. So I'm really hopeful that the Historic Matches Foundation who did the salvage job um, of the interior contents, you know, we said again, yeah. Wilmar Construction did the beautiful clean out job but Historic Matches did the salvage. I'm hoping somebody took two thinking they would come back and take all eight. And yeah, then just like didn't I did I reached out to Carter oh. and he's gonna check and see. Oh, okay. I'm hopeful. Now I will use just the it, six that we have. Yeah, it seems odd that they would have taken that that there would be two missing. Yeah, I've I've it already decided what I'm gonna do. So I'll you if we only have six, I'm gonna use them on the two that you see when you walk in, you know, the two by the fireplace, and then the one right okay. next to those two, and then this one over here that's kind of in the weird corner. Yeah. I'll put something in front of that window and you won't see that yeah, there, there are tie backs there. there but go. but because I think they are also 1840s brass. It, Hope Farm is a, a real mystery for us. We haven't done a lot of research yet between what yeah. happened when the Spanish governor left and Catherine and Balfour Miller bought the house in the 1920s. And that's a hundred and something <laughs> year span of time. That's, that's one of the fun things I think yeah. about Hope Farm is there's still so many mysteries so much to learn such a long period yeah. of time it's funny because a couple of people have been like you know this is original to hope farm and that's original to hope farm and i want to say no no um when original, when this original. got put in in 1840 the house was already old it was already 100 <laughs> years old in some spots crazy these are uh from a period they are period so anyway but so we were very hopeful that those cornices i'd be able to just clean them up that they were just covered in soot because there was no active fire in the dining room. It was extreme heat and soot and smoke and water. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna be able to just clean all this soot off of these. Yeah. We're good to go, but it did it scorched 
scorch that metal cell. But that gives me the chance to play. play and do gilding on these. This is the sizing for the gold leaf. I may have overwatered it a little bit. Your gold leaf has your gold leaf has to have something to stick to, and this is the glue that it sticks to on the surface. Um, so first we cleaned it. You saw me clean it, and now I'm putting on the sizing. The sizing has a little bit. It's white with a little bit of a bluish tint to it. We have to put this on. We want. I'm using this sponge because I want to make sure this is super high relief, and I want to make sure I'm getting the sizing really smushed down into all these tiny cracks and crevices because if it doesn't get smushed, the gold won't stick. So I am getting this on here and when this bluish white tint, tint turns clear, we are ready to apply our gold leaf. And I'm gonna work in small sections, small-ish sections because I don't know how far, this is 25 sheets of 22 karat gold leaf. 25 sheets. I don't know how far I'm gonna get with this. So I don't wanna put sizing on the whole thing and then be like, oh, I have room for six inches. I have gold for six inches. So we're gonna let this sizing dry and then we're gonna apply some gold leaf. So I can talk to you now because I can't talk while I'm moving the gold because it moves the gold. So this is actual 22 karat gold leaf. So this is a super tissue fine piece of gold that we're laying on and then we're just pounding it in, pouncing it in with our brush Please note, this is a professional tool. The gold is a professional tool. These are not professional tools. I am not a professional gilder. They have very fancy brushes, very fancy tools. They have a pad, they have a knife. I'm not gonna buy that to do this project. This is gonna take a lot of gold because this repoussé is very, very deep. So as I lay the gold on top of it, even if I make it smaller squares, it's not getting all the way down into these grooves. So it's taking a lot of gold to get this done. But you lay it on, once, once the sizing dries, you lay it on, you pound it in. I have these smaller brushes because what you wanna do is you wanna get all the air bubbles out and make sure that gold is laying completely flush on your brass. And it's gonna be stunning when I get it done, but it's gonna take a really long time <laughs> and a lot of gold. But there has been actual restoration work going on but it is the let us regale you with the most boring parts of restoration <laughs> work and go well and it, it's similar to going into a house that has been 80s mucked up or whatever you've got to take out before you can put back in this case we're having to take out burn uh we're, we're having to do a lot of demolition because of the burn yeah and, and just so a lot we, of carrying away of We've, you don't want to know what no, it cost us just to uh, just to clean up part of the mess. Yeah, we've still got a huge part. We've got that much at least more to and, do, and it was I could have bought a new car. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, the the uh, Ethel's children had a lot of ton of cleanup done. Yes, yes. Before we ever purchased Hope Farm, a lot of cleanup. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, and they cleaned up the cottage, and they cleaned up. I mean, the ceilings have all fallen in. Yeah. So all of that's been cleaned up. You can see the floor, yes. which is amazing. But there's still, but on especially the on the L, gallery. Uh, yeah, the gallery in the L, the gallery of the L was piled, stacked And the with second debris. floor of the L is still piled. Inside, in, yeah. Inside, and that's going to have to be cleaned. But we had a lot of cleanup done. Um, I think the most exciting thing for me was the electricity. For some reason, when you set the pole, that's what that's actually what happened first. Is the we got the electrical pole right. set, and to me, when you set the pole, it's like things are about to happen. Work is beginning yeah. because we have a way to make work happen. Yeah, and that was that was a very exciting moment to see that come in. You need electricity there. We're gonna need water. I don't, I'm not quite sure. I haven't figured that out <laughs> so, because there are pipes just like well, sticking up in the house. So we're going to have to figure that we'll, all out. We'll have to cut it off and we'll bring it up to the house yeah. and then cut it off. Well, Cross, I need to think about that tomorrow. <laughs> not today. Is <laughs> not it? today. Is that your point? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's going to need think to, about that another that's day. That's going to need to happen. You need water and you need electricity. There's a lot of that in this process for me. Like, I can't think about that right, right now. I just can't. I can't. <laughs> let's. Well, well, let's Let's do this first. Well, they can put the roof on without water, so yeah, exactly. that needs to happen. There and is a lot that can be done, without water, that can be done yeah. without water. There's a lot. Now, I'm sure 
we would like to have water for some things, but there is a most of what is happening in the next six months doesn't necessarily need water right. to occur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were very fortunate with Hope Farm that so much below the attic was in still in fantastic shape, yeah. but when there's a fire, there's going to be a lot of water. I wonder how many of gallons of water. You, I would love to know. I mean, that. it was thousands of gallons of water. I'm sure. Well, with Louise, they told us, and it was something like. 50,000 gallons of water got pumped on the house. So I'm yeah. sure it was a similar. So just imagine that much how, that much water going into a property like that. And this, and, and this property has a basement. And it's closed up basically yeah. too. I mean, they, yeah. they shut all the doors and all the windows and everything to try and keep people from coming in and looting, which we are very appreciative that they did. And was moderately successful. So that's yes, good. Uh, but at the same time, we're trapping all of that water. And so what, what did we discover, Kevin? We got mold. Mold. Bad. Now, you know that we preach all the time, the mold probably won't kill you. <laughs> and it's true. There are many, 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 many kinds of household molds other than toxic black mold. And what's funny is most toxic molds, human toxic molds are actually green, not black, they're actually really dark green. Oh, no, yeah. scare everybody with another color. Toxic green mold. <laughs> um, but the problem with mold in this situation is household molds live off of organic material that they're growing on. So we found it on the wood in the basement so and it was everywhere and there are certain um, types of mold that you're going to find. One of the most common molds you're going to find in your house is penicillium. There's cladosporum, aspergillus. I think I went to high school with him. Did you? Yeah. Was he as fuzzy and weird in high school as he was in the basement? Fuzzy and weird. That's how I would describe it. <laughs> it and it was bad. It, it was really, really bad. Now, we're about to clue you in on something. Now, I am not, we're not here to give you any health advice. We're not here to give you any, um, I mean, I don't, that's, nobody go, Lady Kevin told us this and now our house is worth nothing. But, first of all, people make a lot of money off of fear. A lot of money off of fear. It's one of the best ways to make a lot of money is to scare people. And there are a lot of people who work in the old house industry who make all of their money off of fear. Mold people, paint asbestos, people, asbestos lead. people. That's why I said paint people. I didn't oh, want to yeah. say the, the L word because you could get people going crazy in the comments. Just, just, just don't say it to us, okay? Because I can, I will have a comeback and I'm too tired. I've had structure. <laughs> I'm too tired to have that, to have arguments with you about lead. Um, mold is one of the easiest, cheapest things to remediate in your space and you can do it yourself. Kevin, would you like to tell them the best it's non-toxic, it's all natural, it will not harm you, doesn't harm your surfaces. If you have to put it on wood, if your wood is inside and it's exposed, you don't want to leave it on there long term because it can darken it. But it will kill 82% of mold species. And the only mold species that it doesn't kill are those that live in the soil. And those are not the kind that are growing on your drywall in the bathroom. Kevin, what is that miracle product? Vinegar. Vinegar, cleaning vinegar. vinegar. You want at least 6% acid. You only need the 6% acid to kill the mold and the mold spores. You can spend a lot of money and buy 15%, 20%, 40% acidic vinegars. It's not killing the spores any more dead than the 6%. <laughs> you can go and buy really expensive mold abatement products right. at the hardware store. That How are, much is that are, one that I saw for the one gallon? Oh, it was like $30 for 28, yeah. something like that. I think 30, $30 for this one gallon. Or you can buy five gallons of cleaning vinegar for $13 and get after it. Um, usually we'll take a couple of applications because once you hit it with the, we saturate it with the cleaning vinegar, you may have some spore movement. You wanna make sure you come back and get all of that, but it will kill that mold yeah. dead. Just put it in your pump spray bottle. The thing is you wanna saturate it. Um, because, now I, we didn't even talk about this. A lot of people are like, well, what about bleach? Bleach only kills surface mold. It will make it look like it's gone, but it does not kill the spores. 
So if you have mold inside your house, you wanna use the vinegar to kill the mold and kill the spores. The vinegar may not remove the stain. What you're removing with bleach is the mold stain. So you may wanna come back later after you've washed off the vinegar, apply a little bleach just for the stain. But bleach does not kill mold spores. Vinegar will kill those mold spores. Vinegar is like, it's like a, it's like a Merkle. It stinks, but it is very effective. It is miraculous for so many things. And I will be honest and tell you that I was one of those vinegar, like, like vinegar felt like thieves oil to me for a lot. And again, people Snake who work oil. natural oil, people don't come for me because I love a lot of the natural oils. I love frankincense and I love peppermint. I love lavender. Um, but thieves oil, people are like, this kills everything and it'll cure your cancer and clean your house. <laughs> and so I kind of felt like vinegar good. was sort of the same some. way. <laughs> but no, vinegar. Vinegar does everything. It literally does. It, it, it took the, the foxing spots out of my 18th century silk and it killed the mold that was growing in the basement of Hope. And we'll probably have to kind of continue to treat until we because get that refund. we on. still have a humid, humid property. And we'll... Well, every time it rains, it's going to just... Well, yes. Right down we, into that basement. It hasn't rained in forever. But it did actually rain it there last week. We, 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 we haven't missed seen, it. We haven't seen rain in over a month because <laughs> no. we... We're here, it didn't rain. We went there, it rained here, it didn't rain there. We came home, it rained there, it didn't rain here. So we're just cursed. I know. So we spent a good week cleaning uh, off the galleries, did a lot of cleanup, did the, the mold remediation. Remediation. Is that, is that the right word? Yes, wow, it is. Wow, I got it on the first try. Uh, got the power put up, which was a big deal. And we needed the power also because we had our Restoring Hope weekend. Our first annual, our first I'm already calling it our first together. annual Restoring Hope well, weekend. Well, it's our first get together yeah. at all of all the people that we've been wanting to get together with for quite some time. Years, three and, been talking and a half about years. It. Man, we need to, you know, all get together and we'll do a learning thing or we'll do a touring thing or whatever. So we finally said, you know what? We're going to, the do hottest it. month of the year in far south, we're yeah. going to do it. So August 11th and 12th and 13th, we put together a weekend. Uh, all of you who came, I know had a great time. We've, we've heard it from you and we're so glad that you did. It was just awesome, wasn't it? It was great. It was uh, We had people so from let's, as far away as states. Washington, uh, Oregon, Ohio, Wisconsin, New Hampshire. Ma Where else? Did we have Maine? I don't think we had Maine. Maryland. Uh, we didn't have Maine because Matt didn't come. Because Matthew Charles Matthew, McGinley didn't come. He didn't call out. Um, but we had, you know, lots from Florida, lots from Texas, 22 states, 20, I think it was. Well, I got in trouble for not including Mississippi. Miss, no, not including um, Kentucky since Jim and uh, Ruthie came from Kentucky. They did. So I'm going to say uh, they 23 came. because Jim yeah. and Ruthie, who spend the summer, hot summer, are dear. Dear, precious, wonderful, there are not enough words, I friends, know. Jim and Ruthie, left their cool, beautiful home with its glorious gardens in Kentucky, drove to Natchez, Mississippi, to um, Hell's Kitchen. And were so helpful. I mean, Jim <laughs> did the whole slideshow himself. We had a slideshow at Hope Farm and did all of it. I yeah. mean, I sent him a few slides, but he did all of that. For I mean, like, brought like out the brought projector the table, brought the and, the table and set it up while <laughs> yeah. I'm running around, you know, with my, like a chicken with my head cut off. And so, thank you so much. And but, then, of course, but, Ruthie put... Well, he put mosquito granules in the yard. I mean... We hadn't thought about mosquitoes, really. I had and, thought about it. We had not acted on it. And he, they text, they're like, Jim's going to go put some mosquitoes. We're going to treat for mosquitoes. We're afraid everybody's going to get eaten up. So, we, so Ruthie sends me a picture of Jim. I got a picture. We'll put it up of Jim in the backyard putting mosquito granules up. So... We could not have done what we, love we them did. So much. That's good people. Oh my gosh! So so we had so much help. I want to list our help. We had Jim and Ruthie, who of course oh my goodness. are we don't kind of somebody. the reason that we moved to Natchez. I think honestly, if something happens to Jim and Ruthie. I guess I'll just bury myself in the backyard of Hope Farm. Um, we had my friends Leah Davis, Laura Copeland, Tate, and then her mom Charlotte Copeland were unbelievable. Todd Love, uh, those they all helped us as hosts for the weekend because there were almost a hundred people and we can't, we couldn't wrangle a hundred people that had come in from out of state to go on all the things. Um, Eco Ride there in Natchez was our bus service. They did an unbelievable job. Christy Williams, who works for the Pilgrimage Garden Club, helped me arrange getting into all of the houses and the scheduling there. Uh, who Wayne. else? Oh, oh my gosh, I almost <laughs> forgot Wayne. I thought you were leaving a big and one for last. And then the, and was, I was, I absolutely exactly was. was. Um, Wayne Cannon at the Carriage House Restaurant 
I wanted to I wanted to feed all of these people. And I don't know if you've ever fed large groups of people, yeah. but that is where it can get chaotic. That's yeah. where it can get bad. You were about bad. to get some cheese from Walmart. I but. absolutely was. <laughs> That's what was going to happen. And Wayne stepped in, and I went to Wayne and said, I want to have these events. And then Wayne said, how about we add these events? And I said, that sounds great. And he took over and just knocked it out of the ballpark. The food was incredible. I we, don't know. I'm going to trust you. I got not a bite of anything. Although, so the night, well, things. the night of the Auburn reception, I have gotten not a <laughs> so single funny. bite of anything. So not a bite of anything. After the, we had the reception at Auburn, we immediately went over to Glenfield for a ghost Oh, tour. yes, our friends at Glenfield. Uh, That's someone else yes, was saying. Valerie, Valerie and Marjorie. And Marjorie. Um, and but I had to stay at Auburn because I people were trickling them. out. And well, I ate a little bit while I was there. I, I did not. I'm sorry, I found time to eat. Well, I just I I, I grabbed things to, as people went over. I home. wanted to circulate and talk yeah. to everybody who was there, and I have a real fear of like being eating something oh, okay. and then somebody wanting to talk to me. So I just passed on all the food. So Lane is still at Auburn, and I'm going to come back to Auburn to get her. She's there by herself. And we haven't eaten dinner. I didn't eat dinner. I, I didn't eat much at all that night. And we had not eaten lunch that day. That was the day that the schedule was so packed that we got up, we ate a little bit of breakfast, and I had not eaten the rest of the day. We did eat brunch that morning. Yes, we had brunch that morning, bit. and that was it. And I was dying. I was so hungry, I thought I was going to die. And I was texting Kevin like, I, I can't leave because I don't have a car. There's nothing here. And I went open the refrigerator, and Wayne had left a tray of these little... Oh, gosh, they were good. They were so good. These well, little BLT like bites. It was like this mayonnaise oh, sauce fancy. sprinkled with bacon and a fresh heirloom tomato. Um, when I say it was a tray, because it was for the trays that they carried <laughs> yeah, was, around, I ate half of it. I ate half. And I ate the other and half. And he ate the other half. We <laughs> ate, we, I have never eaten something so fast. It was so like we fast. ate three BLT sandwiches, basically. Yes. So, thank you, Wayne. So, those are, we could not have made this weekend without those people. But more than that, to those of you who came, thank you. It was the best group of people that I have ever had the pleasure of being around. I was very, I was concerned a little bit because we had people coming from, like we said, yeah, both coasts. It's a big country. North to south. People are different. Very different cultures, very different ways to interact. And it was beautiful. It was like a class, it was like a high school reunion. We all just started yes. talking and everybody got along. Good friendships made. Yeah, that's what I was I was most wanting to see was this group of people who have this shared interest come together and really become friends and yeah. and enjoy this activity together and we were so excited that it yeah. went so well. And then we had our heart pine. <laughs> yeah. Which was great. We had, there there were people there who have been with us from day one and I mean like probably the day that we opened the account they signed up and have been there and it just sort of ended up at the end of the Hope Forum event those people had sort of congregated together and were sitting together so we got to have some time with the people who really have been here from the beginning and for everything and if you if you came to the event and you weren't one of those people please don't think we we missed you there. I know a couple of people they got, stayed up later I think yeah and, I, well, and a couple people we did have a, a one couple that is dear 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 she got a little sick at lunch earlier that day so they didn't get to come that night and i hated that but um should we go through the events that we had yeah we've got i think yeah let's tell them all what we the did because we're going to do this again and if you didn't come this time we're going to do it again and it'll be and we're going to try better. to make it available for more people because we had to cut it off this time and and I'm, you know what i feel mostly bad like is that if we were on the outside and we were coming to this know, event, we wouldn't have been able to come. Yeah. Because we would not have committed in time. No, there's no way. That the tickets were cut off. Yeah. So if you are like us and you were like, I'm going to go to that, but yeah. I got to I gotta wait and see. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, I can't buy tickets now? Yes, uh, I feel terrible Then about I that. feel really bad that you weren't able to come. And that was just, it got out of control. Yeah, we didn't we know planning, this was going to happen. We thought 15 to 20 people, okay? This, when I went to Christy to say we want to do these special tours of these houses, yeah. she said, how many people do you think will come? And I was like, I don't know. And she We're said, like surely, 25, she maybe. goes, surely 20. And I was like, yeah, yeah, 20. I think 20. And then we have all to uh, throughout the whole weekend, it ended up being like 160 people that we were juggling yes and so it got a little it got a little hairy we got a little crazy but it wasn't it wasn't and we could have accommodated more people mm. but we just that well not at all number. the events that not at all number. the events but anyway we just didn't know what we were doing um to be quite honest with you and didn't want the people who were there to suffer because it got out of hand and it, it didn't 
No, it went very, very well, uh, even to the harshest critics, us. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. We thought it went very well. I think everybody had a great time. Um, much, Most of it went very smoothly. There were a couple of folks that I don't know their names that helped us out that first morning during registration. Oh, Deb, Connor, and her husband. That's Ruthie's uh, brother, whose name I have forgotten, Ruthie. I know, oh, my gosh. I, I am I, well, so I, sorry. I mean, they were there handing out packets when we got there, which, yep. which was early. And I don't, I don't even know that I ever actually officially met. Anyway, if you were watching this and that was you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I haven't heard uh, from Deb since the weekend. I need to message her. So we had, uh, we had registration where you got your lanyards and everything and your schedules. I mean, I, I only mention that because that was all, all of that is a lot of work for us to negotiate and to pull together. Yeah. I want you to know that we gave a lot of thought to every event. We didn't just say, hey, we're going to go we're here. We're going. Um, you had a so, group number. Yes. And you, so they came. Your lanyard showed all the things you were going to be doing. Right. And so you registered. Then we immediately toured Stanton Hall, which was a fantastic house there in Natchez, one of the museum houses. Uh, we had brunch after that in the triple parlors of Stanton Hall, really which is a big deal. And that is a really special thing. I don't know that yeah. people really appreciated the fact that's not something that you're just like, hey, I think I'll have brunch at Stanton Hall. <laughs> that doesn't happen. That doesn't, that is a really big that, deal. That's a rarity. So yeah, we were but that was really that. exciting and to get to do those, that. That was full. Yeah, it was and, and it went really well. Of course, Wayne was completely in charge of brunch. We can't take credit for any of the food. You know who we didn't thank? Who? Dr. Terrell Williams. Well, who, I, I okay. thought about mentioning it. He came to every event and was so supportive of yes. everything. But, I mean, oh, and Marsha Colson. I didn't mention her either. That That's bad. She's the president of the Pilgrimage Garden Club who also opened her home. We'll get to that in a second, but we left yeah. those off the thank you, so I want to get those in there really sure. quickly. Uh, uh, then we immediately went over to Longwood, which is another museum home that's always on tour there. My favorite. A super special property. It, I mean, huge. I mean, it's like 30,000 square feet. Yeah, it's, it? it's, it's so big. Octagonal uh, on lots of acreage still. It's, I don't know if you don't know Longwood, they, they began before the Civil War. The Civil War broke out. The builders put their tools down and left. It, yeah. And it stayed like it was in 1861. April 15th of 1861. Um, it has a, not changed since then. What a lot of people don't know and have a misconception about, it was a big deal in Natchez, Mississippi to be able to have the money to bring a northern architect and his northern crew of craftsmen down to do your house. These are suburban villas that are very high style, having architectural plans done. This isn't vernacular architecture where things are just kind of being thrown together on the fly as families grow, using labor that's right there. Um, these, it was a big social coup to be able to say, my architect came from Pennsylvania and he brought all of his artisans from there. So and many of the materials were actually shipped. Most of the materials of were shipped yeah. down. Um, and so when the war broke out, there was nobody left, nobody left to work on the house. So they lived in the basement for the rest of their lives. So that was our next And it's unfinished spot. property, which is great, great, great. So uh, then we had a break and then Later that evening, we had a reception at Auburn, which is the home that we are the conservatives yes, for. and our citizens got a private wine and cheese reception there and a tour. There, the, the citizens group is the only one that got a, the official tour of Auburn with me. So that was fun to get to take that group, which yes. there were 60 something people, which was a big group of people to take through Auburn. That was our biggest group. Oh, it was, that was that a we lot had of people. Today <laughs> that was a to lot go of people through Auburn to at tour. once. Right, um, and then we immediately went on a ghost tour. No, but then, so then after the the restaurant after the citizens event, we had an open reception. It was open for people in Natchez, and that was the city free of Natchez. For everyone. Yes, um, everybody from Natchez could come. All you had to do was reserve and say that tell us you were coming, so we'd know to have food for you. Open bar, so you know everybody came, um, and then all the rest of the attendees of that weekend. So we had a few hundred people, I would say, come and go through that event through Auburn. And it was really fun because we haven't been able to make a ton of changes at Auburn yet. That's going to be a very slow process because of the way it's controlled. But we have been able to refurnish some of the rooms, redo the gift shop, redo the study, uh, put up, put in some museum displays, put up some museum signage. So that was really exciting to get to kind of show the direction that Auburn will be taking. Right. And we both worked really hard setting up the uh, gift shop and the office, most notably, yes. of the two rooms that got done. And the dining room. 
and the dining room. And so before the event, we did do a ton of work at Auburn yeah. getting it Yeah, ready. the week before, we were there till like 2 in the morning every night. Uh, so that was day one. Day one was a full day. It was a, a lot doozy. to do and see. It was a doozy. <laughs> But we also left a little bit of time uh, if you came from out of town, as most of the you know seventy-five or so people yeah, did, did, to see Natchez and you know to check out some of the restaurants and a couple of the houses. They went to see many of the other yeah. houses. Um, so let's go to day two. I think day two is when we had was Sunnyside and Briars. And... Yes. Okay. So day two, um, the they had citizens free time group. In the morning. They had free time and well for quite a while. The citizens group came over to Pearl and toured Pearl at 11. Tell them what you expected and, and then what happened. That was, it was great. I loved it. It was great. It was crazy. It was not, I don't know what I expected. I, I, it, it happened like I expected. He did not expect it. I guess not. Well, we told everybody 11 o'clock, come over to Pearl. Well, they were there at 1045, ready to come in. Everybody. I mean, we're still cleaning like the house. Like 70 people. Dealing with our dogs, which is something we always have to do. I kind of thought people would come and go, like between 11 and <laughs> what, 12.30. When did we yeah, cut that off? 12.30. So um, he thought it would be a come and I, go. We, we thought they would come and go, but no, they were all there at 10.45, which was fantastic. Have you been to like an estate sale or maybe like a concert <laughs> or a movie opening where there's a line out but people waiting to get in? We look out. We get all ready. We finally get ready because our bedroom's in the back. And we walk out of our bedroom and we look out the front door and there's people just like just lying down there. the block. Oh my gosh. We had to move because the sun was chasing us. We had big sun across our... Sun. And the last place we need to look wider is through here. <laughs> so where were we? Oh, and there, but then there were people from Natchez who also snuck in, which I thought was kind of funny because oh, we made they? it really... Yeah, they made it really clear that this was like just a citizen's event. They might have been citizens all these, though. Well, We've we got several from Natchez. I don't, I don't, the ones that I saw are not people that like interact with us regularly, I don't think. So I, I was like... We mm. had actually the like couple weeks leading up to that event we had a lot of that's Natchez true that, maybe they were I should, but i just thought i thought it was i was very happy to see them there please don't understand i was thrilled that they came and they yeah. wanted to see but it was funny so i would say we probably had around 70 people yeah but so this is what was funny about it to me they you, as you come in to tour a house you look in the first room and the second room and you know they weren't able to do that we had 70 people they kind of yeah. all came in and went all <laughs> the way to the back and then milled around yeah. because otherwise they would have just kept yes. waiting there yeah. front to come in. So yep. it was just a flood of people just to see I'm holding the door going, hello, hello hi, hello, thanks hello. for coming, hello, hi. And we had water there for people. We gave it all away. I have no idea if, they, if, if everybody who needed water got it. But that was only one of the free events that people could enjoy that morning. Um, our friends Chip and Clara Newman, who are restoring the Briars, very important 1818 oh, home. Gorgeous house. They opened the Briars up so people could come and just see what a house looks like mid restoration. They're doing such a beautiful job. And then our friend Colleen Wilkins, who owns Sunnyside, first of all, the house is to die for. She and I have the exact same taste. We're more is more kind of girls. Yeah. But Colleen is actually is probably one of the finest chefs I've ever seen do food. And she is known for being the best of the best for bread and, bed and breakfast food in Natchez. And she had done, she was doing an open house with like little little breakfast foods. So that, so you could go see three more houses for free as part of the weekend's fun That things. was Yeah, that's all before our activity started on uh, Saturday. Yeah. We were given a tour of Greenleaves, which is a fantastic property that's been in this family for so long. It's, you could spend hours and hours at Green Leaves because I, yeah. it's not just the architecture there. It's the items in, in the house. And it's All been on carpets. pilgrimage consistently every for year how many since years? 1932, I think. Nearly 100 years of it's yes, been on pilgrimage. Every pilgrimage. So all the carpets are original. All the drapes are original. All the wallpapers are oh, original. Okay. And this is a situation where when I say are original, I mean they're, they were put in when the house was built and they're all still there. So that in and of itself. Now, if you didn't come to Natchez for architecture, you might not have understood the second day houses because they're not as shiny as the ones that are like, that had fallen into disrepair and are fully restored. These are houses, you are looking at a time capsule and it is such a incredible honor to be able to go into a home that is unchanged for almost 200 years and to not only see the architecture and the home and those architectural elements 
in the home, but the decorative arts that are in there that have been in there all of that time. And then there are all these family collections family that are just history, yeah, the, the collections unbelievable. The bullet hole in the glass yeah. and the stories that they tell. It's unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. And, and to have that tangible evidence of your ancestry to me is so so special and Ruthie and Jim and Deb and and Aylit I'm trying to think of all the family members were there are were so gracious to share that with our with our group and then similar situation we bus over to Lansdowne, Lansdowne. which is pro which I would I would put for me in the same caliber as green leaves because sure. it's the same scenario Marsha Colson who own, currently owns Lansdowne, Lansdowne. Her actual first name is Marshall because it's the Marshall family home. Her family built the home and everything in it is original. It's it's just to look at that Zubair wallpaper that her ancestors hung on the wall, the Lambrequins that have been there, the, the furniture piece. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And it's me. also a bed and breakfast. It is right? a bed and breakfast. And oh my gosh! Some folks and if, stay there, I which would. Is fun. If you don't want to stay in the city proper, because it is out just, it's like five minutes from downtown, but it's it's on a ton of acreage, so you feel like you are in, oh, in the, the middle of middle nowhere. of nowhere. Oh, it's so nice. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And Marsha was so Marsha had been sick. She had bronchitis, but she was so gracious to host us. And then. Then we had a high tea. A high tea. Which I don't, I'm Lansdowne. still not sure I know what that is, but. Well, it's just what time it occurs <laughs> and what is offered, what food is offered. Okay. Is what constitutes the high tea. Okay. Um, but it was like the Southern version of high tea because there was also a heavily liquor laced punch, which is, <laughs> again, we're in Natchez. You've got a you know, very, 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 very Natchez version of the high tea, but people, it was served from the Marshall dining room, dining table and People got to sit, there was a long table in the front hall that people got to sit and just visit and chat and then other small tables. It was unbelievable. And they were visiting and chatting, which makes me so yeah. happy. So then they had free time after uh, Lansdowne, after our high tea, our high tea. Our high tea at Lansdowne. They had some free time and our next event was the citizens came over to Hope Farm early before our reception Well, I think there. we should be very transparent about what happened when we arrived at Hope Farm. <laughs> you want Oh my gosh. Uh, what did we, the what party time was, was not supposed the invitation was for 8 o'clock. The oh, the invitation for people who had been invited was 8 o'clock. It was 7:45 for citizens to get a look and a history lesson about Hope Farm. We got, we there, got there at 7:30 and the place was packed. It was full. Full. Packed. People everywhere. Fortunately, our our Wayne was there and he had tables out. And the bar was, was open ready so to go. Uh, we had a, we just had to turn on lights and get a few Can't, things set I, up. And, I don't handle that. I want everything to be perfect when people right, arrive. Right. Like I want you to walk into the magical wonderland. And it was not about the Edith Piaf wasn't playing yet. The lights weren't turned on. The candles weren't glowing. It it almost sent me into the first tailspin of the weekend. Yes, a little bit. It was ten chaotic minutes of us running around yes. sweating. And then I didn't, ready. I didn't eat all the rest of the night. And I think it was because all the rest of the night, I sort of felt like, like, it, like that same tension and, and work. I did. But, That's you know, me. They were just, they were eager. They were excited to come see it. And so it makes me happy. Yeah, uh, no. And it yes. wasn't a big deal. It was a, it was hard on us because yes, we because usually I'm a have control it freak. all ready and it wasn't all ready. So we felt terrible, but yeah. it was fine. Uh, and we got everything on and everything ready, and we gave our citizens a quick uh, tour. Uh, uh, you you talked them through some of the Just history. Just the history of the house, the interesting bits of the architecture of the property. You saw some in our last video where we're talking about the hand-hewn beams and the poplar wood and some of the things that really make Hope Farm spectacular and different. We had a ton of local people come yeah. to that event we were i would say we so ended supportive. up with a couple hundred people all together i think so at that event it was unbelievable and you know we we strung lights and it was really beautiful and even though it hope was farm, magical even though hope farm has burned and it is in a bad state it was a very magical kind of time i, I loved elodie's um elodie posted i saw i posted a picture of it on instagram and elodie said it was sublime and I thought that. Yes, we have a friend in great. Natchez named Elodie. Isn't that a beautiful Which, name? Which, if I 
could go back in time and have a child right now. It, like, I want to have a daughter just so the I can name her Elodie. Elodie. I love that name it does, so it's much. It's musical. It is. Well, it's like Melody without uh, the mm. Exactly, I guess. I love uh, it. I love it. But she also brought us something and super special. And those people who were there saw me open this and saw me cry, and I'm not a crier at all. I'm a hard-hearted old Grinch. <laughs> but she brought this, and I opened it up. And first of all, I'm a China fanatic. And I see this beautiful piece of time. I didn't even see this. Oh my gosh, look at yes, the back you, of it. No, you didn't know I no. saw that. Shows the mark on the back. So she brings this, hands it to me. Oops. And then it comes with this. Do you see that? To Catherine, for Catherine. Catherine. Grafton Miller. Yeah, tell who, them who that is. Exactly. So Catherine Gra Grafton Miller was the woman who founded the Natchez pilgrimage. She is the woman who envisioned it. She traveled with a magic lantern slide set around the United States, promoting Natchez, basically saved Natchez when, during the depression, when the bull weevil took over the world, there was nothing in Natchez, no reason for people to come there. And she realized that Natchez had this architectural history that existed nowhere else in this concentration in the Southeast. Not only do I have now an item that was given to Catherine Grafton Miller, the woman who restored Hope Farm the first time, the woman who founded the Pilgrimage Garden Club, the woman who preserved Stanton Hall. Not only do I have something that was given to her as a gift, I have the letter and I have part of the Stanton family history and the Stanton family that was so important to Natchez. Um, and Elodie gave this to me and I, I lost my mind a little bit and I never, I never do that. So this Such is something that gift. there's no way to express how much I will treasure this. This, this is one of those, if there's a fire, you grab it things that's, that that's on, this is on that yeah. list, yeah. you know? So that that rounded out the weekend, uh, that that rounded out the weekend quite nicely. Right. But there was more. <laughs> yes, uh, that was a wonderful night. We stayed up till twelve thirty or so. Really with the late. Last folks that stayed there with us. It was great. Uh, up to the next morning, we had breakfast at the Burn, Mister Terrell, Doctor Doctor Terrell Williams' house. Don't don't downgrade him. That's hard <laughs> to get that degree. Friend, he's my friend Terrell. Uh, and that was fantastic. Well, and I will say, I want to say a special thank you to Terrell. Not like Kevin said, not only did he come to every event over the weekend, which he didn't have to do, just came to show his support, but the champagne got, got left. So the, the, the brunch was a small brunch. It was like a heavy continental. And part of what it was, was mimosas and Bloody Marys. Oh, I didn't even know this. Tell yeah. Me. So what happened was that everything made it to the burn except for the champagne. So they had to go back to Stanton Hall, get the champagne, bring it back, which was going to be about a 20 minute round trip thing. So Terrell threw in a free tour of the burn oh, and took all that's the people. Why, I didn't There's know why that happened. 50 people who are like, he's like, let's go have a tour of the burn. And everybody got then an extra house tour. Because they, the burn is fantastic. Oh, probably. It's fantastic. So fabulous. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. So, so that was our final event of the first annual Restoring Hope Weekend that for me could not have gone better it was just beautiful it was wonderful and if you came you know it was uh please you know comment tell the folks that didn't make it that they should go next time we love natchez so much and there's so much to do and see there uh that if you love old houses you will love we it. could have a restoring hope weekend biannually until we die and you would not see everything there is to see and experience Absolutely. in natchez mississippi and we, I, I mean that genuinely we haven't seen it all and we've been <laughs> no we've been in so many houses and nope. done so many tours and filmed so many houses there's still a ton to see so that was kind of a sum up of what's been going on the last yeah. few weeks lots of work lots of cleaning lots lots of small movements you know when you're planning a battle you gotta you gotta get your strategery in right at the beginning <laughs> uh but thanks for going along with us on this video thanks for being supportive and coming to our events yes uh we love you all we'll see you next thank time thank you thank you mayella and i just had the best night's sleep on our new brooklyn and sheets and our new brooklyn and duvet cover so right now Brooklyn and is having their Labor Day sale. Now through September 6th of 2023, you can get 20% off all of the goodies on their websites. The sheets, 
the towels, the duvet covers, all of this delicious buttery goodness is 20% off. All you gotta do is use our link in the description below and get your 20% off in this Labor Day sale.